So grab your force weapon and storm bolter, and let's prepare to vanquish some demons in the Emperor's name. Today we're talking about some practical tips for starting a Grey Knight army in Warhammer 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel, where today we're talking Grey Knights and a general all round discussion of starting a new army of the faction in Warhammer 40k. In the video, we'll cover why you might want to collect Grey Knights, a little bit on buying Warhammer miniatures, planning out an army for the first time, your first steps and first ideas for purchases, some analysis of the Grey Knight Combat Patrol box, how to expand the army from there, and rounding up with one example of a strong army list in game right now. A whole load to talk about for the Knights of Titan, so let's jump straight in with why you might want to collect the army in the first place. So, in the lore, Grey Knights are a hyper elite demon hunting task force based on Titan and an oddity amongst Space Marine chapters, as every single battle brother is also a psyker, and famously, no Grey Knight Space Marine has ever fallen to the temptations of chaos. Not particularly bad going, seeing as being a psyker in the first place makes you particularly easy access. From their shadowy clandestine homeworld, they're guided by their prognosticars, a council of all seeing psychers predicting the future who will know where Grey Knights incur into the material realm and send off task forces to meet them, hopefully ending existential threats to the Imperium before they even materialise. Once arriving at an embattled war zone, they'll typically be teleported into battle in their characteristic silver armour, make great use of psychically attuned power weapons called force weapons, and psychically activated bullets, relying on the very pinnacle of Imperial technology, accompanied by knowledge of the arcane and their psychic rights. If you want a task force of super advanced demon hunters, then the Grey Knights might be for you. Miniatures wise, the Grey Knight range is a bit of a small one comparatively. Their main army primarily consists of three different plastic kits, their Terminators, the Strike Squad and their Nemesis Dread Knights. Maybe not the most recent things that Games Workshop have come out with, but they still belong to the newer generation of nice plastic kits that they brought out, and in general I think they hold up fairly well. The appearance of the Baby Carrier Dread Knight has always divided a few opinions though. Beyond that, they have a fair few characters, support options and vehicles and things drawn from the main Space Marine Codex, though they don't get access to the vast majority of the Space Marine arsenal, only a few more common units. Having a slightly smaller range does have its advantages though, it means it's not too hard of a thing to get a copy of most of the squads that you might want for a diverse army. Gameplay wise, Grey Knights are basically always going to be a hyper elite army with very powerful war gear. They can be quite a fun one to play as they're fairly active in all phases of the game, obviously lots of psychic with every single squad having a go at that, but also a fair bit of short range punchy shooting with storm bolters or dread knight firepower, followed by a hefty dose of powerful melee, putting all of those damage to force weapons to work. They are also quite teleport heavy, lots of units can deep strike into battle, or move around the board with teleport shunts or the gate of infinity spell. That's quite nice as well, otherwise that a lot of their squads will be really quite slow. Perhaps the main weaknesses are that they have a relatively low defence for their points cost, due to having quite a lot of powerful abilities, and they will often be fairly heavily outnumbered by the foe, and don't have quite as many sacrificial units in their arsenal. Currently in game, I'd say they're one of the stronger factions in Warhammer 40k, maybe not at the very top of the tree anymore, they did have a couple of nerves to key units, plus some powerful codexes have come out recently, but they are still very decently powerful, and should have a good hope against most armies in the game. Finally, if you were thinking about picking them up, Price wise you could do worse in 40k, generally the more elite armies tend to be relatively cheaper just due to getting more points on the board per model, you can be getting quite a sizeable force on the table for not all that much investment. Before we go any further, I would mention my usual advice for buying models in 40k, direct from Games Workshop is probably the most reliable but also perhaps the most expensive, I would certainly consider the other alternatives. Local gaming stores if they're available where you are can often give decent discounts, and they generally tend to be my preferred way to pick up miniatures. For example, in the UK, Element Games gives between 10 and 20% off Warhammer models. They're linked down in the video description below. That link is an affiliate link and supports the channel a bit, but if you buy through them, it doesn't cost you any more and helps out the channel a little bit. It's well worth having a search around though. There's probably plenty of other options throughout the world wherever you are. Otherwise, you could look at picking up Grey Knights on the second-hand market. Maybe look on eBay if you live in a country where it's a big thing. The UK and US markets in particular tend to be quite good, or local swapping and selling groups or forums can be a decent idea if you don't mind assembled and painted models. Finally, 3D printing certainly is a thing. There's plenty of great alternative sculpts for Grey Knight models out there. In particular, I've seen some absolutely fantastic counts as Dread Knights. Provided you're not playing in official Games Workshop stores or events, then that shouldn't be any problem either. Can be a decent way to get your hands on some flexible parts and war gear as well. 
In any case, if you are planning to pick up a Grey Knight army, then you can certainly do a fair bit of planning beforehand. Getting the Codex at least relatively early on might well help with planning. It of course has all the model's rules, plus a decent amount of backstory and some nice miniature galleries and things can certainly help with a little bit of inspiration or understanding the faction a bit more. Otherwise, you could build up army lists and things on sites like Warpedia, Battlescribe, or even the 40k app, and you could do a bit of trying before you're buying, experimenting with things like army lists on Tabletop Simulator, or just proxying the models in person with other things. Social media can be another decent resource as well. Feel free to have a search for things like Facebook pages, Reddit threads, Discord servers, and forums and things. And of course, there's an absolute ton of things available on YouTube. I've certainly made a fair few Grey Knight videos already, a few things like tier rankings, brotherhood discussions, and things like that. Though, of course, there's plenty more out there. You can watch some battle reports to see them in action. There aren't all that many dedicated Grey Knight YouTube channels that I could find. I did notice one called One Last Blade, though. They could be worth a look. Otherwise, after taking in information from these sort of places, you could think about building up a 2,000 point army list, and maybe decide if there's any particular slant of Grey Knights that you want to play. In general, just about every flavour of the army is going to be playing with a whole load of hyper elite guys with storm bolters and force weapons, but there's certainly a few different flavours of that that you can achieve in the list. You could go very Terminator heavy if you wanted, or focus a lot more on power armoured Grey Knights. You could field maximum Dread Knights, throw in some Dreadnoughts into the mix, perhaps even go very vehicle heavy with supporting things like land raiders or flyers, or maybe go for a real bit of hero hammer and focus on a lot of really stacked characters and librarians dishing out loads of psychic. Colour scheme wise, Grey Knights do have the advantage of being a fairly beginner friendly army. It can just be as simple as spray them silver and add a bit of a non oil wash if you want to, but there's an awful lot of ways that you can execute silver armies, anything from dry brushing all the way up to non metallic metal blending. Though I must admit, I think I'd be a bit fairly tempted to keep it simple myself and just paint up a test model or two until we get something that you're happy with. So once you have a first plan, it's time to make the first purchases then. And actually start to get some miniatures on the tabletop. First up, as I mentioned, Codex Grey Knights seems like a pretty reasonable first step. £32.50, €42.50 Euros 50, or $55, which mercifully for a 40k codex does at least have all the Grey Knights rules in one place at the moment, and they're not strung out in other places like campaign books. Besides the codex, my first look would be things like some core troops and some fun units, things that you either think that you'll be using in every single game, or just anything in particular that really drew you to the faction, whether or not it's one given character model, a hyper elite squad of terminators to field as paladins maybe, or whatever else particularly interested you. For me, I think that I'd be most tempted to start with a standard strike squad kit. At time of recording, they feel a little bit more efficient than Grey Knight Terminators on the tabletop, feel about as close as they can possibly get to the faction's default troops choice, and you do have a few different ways that you can build and field them if you want to. That's the kit that you'd use if you wanted to field, say, purgation squads, purifiers, or the interceptors, so you do get really quite a lot of choices when you pick up one of those boxes. Another really good way to start, of course, could be the Combat Patrol Grey Knights box, which I thought we'd take a look at in a little bit more detail. So the Grey Knights Combat Patrol box has been really long awaited. At the time of making the slides for this video, I really wasn't sure when it was going to release, but it seems that it's finally going up for pre-order this weekend, so hopefully for anyone finding this video on the internet in the future, it should be out already. The Combat Patrol boxes have been increased in price a little bit, £90, €120, Euros, or $150, and in the Grey Knight box it gets you a Terminator Librarian, a Nemesis Dread Knight, a Terminator Squad, and 5 Strike Marines. In terms of model composition, it's about as excellent as you could get for Grey Knights, I think. As I mentioned, they kind of only really have three plastic kits between the Dread Knight Terminators and Strike Squad. You only get half the Strike Squad miniatures in here that you would in a normal box, but basically this is the entire Grey Knight faction in one box at a small discount. Perhaps the main downside compared with other combat patrol boxes for other factions is that the Grey Knight discount really is quite stingy. Typically, compared with buying the miniatures separately, Games Workshop gives around about a 30 to 40 percent discount in these boxes, but Grey Knights only get 20 percent off. Still, though, even at that slightly modest discount, I think that this could still be very worth it. If you want to collect a fairly well-rounded Grey Knight army, then this is an absolute excellent start. The Dread Knight, Strike Marines, and Librarian are all top-tier competitive right now. Maybe the Terminator's lagging a tiny bit behind, though not enormously so I'd say, and they're certainly very cool and iconic miniatures for Grey Knights. I think if I were trying to get a big 2000 point army of Grey Knights off the ground, I would seriously consider getting two of these boxes. Probably not three of them, as then I feel that you get into very diminishing returns with the Librarians, but it would certainly give you a seriously meaty amount of points on the table. 
Depending on what loadouts or unit options you give the guys in here, you could easily be looking at over 600 points worth of models, making this one of the better deals of army sets in 40k in general. So once you do have a fair few squads and maybe an HQ or two together, how would you think about assembling those miniatures and maybe expanding from there? Currently for strike squads, in terms of the force weapons, I'd generally be thinking mainly about using spears and halberds for the majority of the units. They tend to be the options that people pick in the more competitive lists, maybe with the odd warding stave to allow you to activate the stratagem if you need to. I'd also be kind of tempted to magnetise their backpacks. If magnetising miniatures is something that you're into, being able to swap out between strike squads and interceptors could be quite nice if you do need to change up your list. In general, I wouldn't really tend to go too heavy on the side weapons for the troops at the moment. They're not terrible, but I think that the storm bolters do pretty well just by themselves. Maybe if you're building up terminators, you could justify a few more side cannons and things there, if you are thinking about using them as a bit of an indomitable brick with some layered defence on them. Again, for terminators, same as the strike squads, I'd be very tempted by the spears and the halberds as my first choice of force weapons. The Nemesis Dread Knights, currently the go-to build, is using the Nemesis Greatsword, accompanied by the Gatling Silencer and Heavy Psy Cannon. All of those upgrades are very decent indeed for the amount of damage that they can do. I'd be very tempted to use at least one Dread Knight as a Grandmaster in Nemesis Dread Knight. Those guys can be seriously scary on the tabletop with some combinations of relics and traits. In any case, either using the Combat Patrol or just getting kits that you like, I'd aim to build up to a 500 points or 25 power level and get in a few Combat Patrol games putting the Battle Brothers in action on the table. Then expanding from there, I'd be looking to add more damage dealers and bodies to the list. Currently Dread Knights do tend to be the main heavy lifting unit of the Codex, they're by far the best firepower in the book with that Silencer and Psy Cannon loadout. I think that the vast majority of Grey Knight lists will take at least a few of them. They could always trade out for things like Dreadnoughts maybe, if Dread Knights don't exactly float your boat. As I mentioned, I'd be very tempted by a Grandmaster one, particularly with that Sigil of Exigence for jumping away when he's shot, he can be a seriously terrifying threat in-game. I'd also want to have at least a fairly decent representation of interceptors and strike squads on the board. Strike squads will fill up detachments for cheap, and have some of the best melee damage in the codex point for point. I probably wouldn't go overboard on them, but they're great for holding down backfield objectives, and counter-attacking if the enemy gets too close, and interceptors are really nice for just jumping up into the middle of the board, getting their threat where they need to be, and hopefully putting themselves in positions where it's going to be difficult for the opponent to take them out. Finally for HQs, I think a Librarian is a really solid first choice. He can make some really fun builds for them where they just throw out loads of mortal wounds. Vortex of Doom plus a Warlord trait can really stack the damage on the enemy units. Otherwise, Caldor Drago is just an all-round beast and a great beat stick. And I think both Castell and Crow and Tech Marines are really quite interesting choices as well. Tech Marines in particular if you're taking a fair few Dread Knights. Finally, just to round up, here's one example of a strong army list. I had a quick look at best coast pairings for top tournament armies with Grey Knights, and here's just one example of a Grey Knight army that went undefeated at a team event, written and played by a gentleman called Darrow Venture. I think it's a really good example of the strong stuff that Grey Knights can bring to the table at the moment, running a whole ton of their strongest units, though of course you could sub bits and bobs out of this for other things if you felt like mixing it up with some other models. Leading the force is a Grandmaster in Nemesis Dread Knight with Empiric Amplification, the spell that makes Force and Psy weapons a lot more dangerous, and Vortex of Doom. He's got the Great Sword Silencer and Psy Cannon upgrade, and takes the Servant of the Throne at 3 plus Invul save when he's shot, and the Sigil of Exigence for teleporting away. There's then the big damage dealing Librarian with Purifying Flame and Vortex of Doom. With Psychic Epitome, he can spit out an insane amount of mortal wounds there, potentially blasting away entire squads in a single volley of mind bullets. A tech marine with warp shaping and etheric conduits to help repair those dread knights super fast, and Caldor Draco himself with Gates of Infinity to get him where he needs to be, and again empiric amplification and warp shaping. For boots on the ground, there's two big units of ten strike marines, armed with seven swords, two halberds, and one stave. I'd guess that they're going to be split up into smaller units of five, but I guess could stay together if the mission dictated it. Three small units of interceptors to jump forward and do midfield things and then some heavy muscle in three Nemesis Dread Knights, each with Silencer and Psy Cannon, two of them upgraded with Great Swords, and one of those ones with a Teleporter as well. The Dread Knights in particular make great use of the Swordbearer's Brotherhood, that's the one that allows them to get plus one to hit and wound against certain targets if they need to, and basically makes that very general purpose Dread Knight shooting monstrously scary. Overall, it's a very solid army list, not really surprised to see something like this doing well in tournaments, Perhaps a decent example of what Grey Knights can do at their peak at the moment. 
So anyway, I hope that's been at least some food for thought on starting a Grey Knight army in Warhammer 40k. If you've enjoyed the video, certainly feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics. I do try and keep regular 40k content coming just about every single day. Finally, if you have been enjoying the videos on the channel and you'd like to help support, I would just like to mention that Element Games affiliate link again. It's down in the video description, and if you live in the UK, that's a decent way to get 10-20% to off Games Workshop's miniatures, and also help keep these videos coming while you do so. If you were thinking about ordering anything in, just click on the link, buy whatever you are going to, a small amount goes to help support All Specs Tactics, and it doesn't cost you any more extra whatsoever. For people over in the USA, I do also have an Amazon link as well down there. That one works basically exactly the same. Click the link, order whatever you are planning on, and again a small amount goes to help support the channel. In any case, an absolutely massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.